Okay. Yep. All right. So the recording is started. Uh, so um, we're talking about the OSI model uh, very briefly because this is review. Uh, most of these sessions will be um, about two hours at most, I would assume. Um, but uh, today we're just gonna we're gonna keep it um, pretty short, and we're gonna talk about the OSI model. Um, in uh, the the OSI model, of course, it's it's responsible. We've talked about it's responsible for uh, providing a a sort of structured approach to networking, so that you can view it from a from an approach that's that's something that you can you can take from one network to another, replace equipment at different layers, and still maintain consistency at a, at one layer. So if if you change uh, if you change um, the technology at the at the data link layer it has no bearing on the network layer. The network layer will still function in the same way, but you can you can update technology. A uh, good analogy for for uh, the OSI model is uh, is the postal system, right? Um, if they if they if a driver uh, or, or if a mail delivery man is is um, uh, he he buys a truck and now he can deliver mail to uh, you know, a further range, or he can go uh, further with it. Then, then uh, you know, he's upgraded the 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 process at one layer, but he hasn't he hasn't necessarily made any changes to how you address your packet, right? So you still put the you still put the mailing address on on the envelope, but now the guy can can get to your house much quicker, right? So he's you've essentially updated one layer of the delivery process. But uh, you haven't affected um, it really anything else with the delivery, right? So that's that's sort of a good analogy for what the OSI model does. Like if you update or upgrade your switches, right? It has no bearing on how data gets transferred from router to router. Okay, so that's really that's really what the OSI model is for. It's to take a complicated subject and turn it into a, a more simplified series of tasks. Okay. Oh, there I see Marcia now. Hey, Marcia, are you in? Can you hear me? I don't know if she can hear. She might be trying to figure that out still. All right. <laughs> All right. So, um, so in in a reference model, like I was saying, you know, um, each task in in the uh, each layer or each breakdown of the reference model has no has no bearing on the previous layers. Marsha, you're in twice, do you see that? Can you hear me? I don't know if she can hear me or not. She sees it. Yeah, her audio might be up. Might be, she uh, might have her mute button down. I'm gonna shoot her a quick message in chat real quick. See if I can't. Uh, yeah, we can see it. See her, just can't hear. <laughs> I don't know if she sees the chat. She's on. She's on twice. Anyway, uh, maybe I'll just throw her the word of the day. Throw her a bone here, and we get a little layer. Um, so, of course, I, I want to review the layers. The layers are application, presentation, session, transport, network, data link, physical. Um, of course, the application layer. This is where the user interfaces uh, with um, with the computer for network services. Uh, this is where um, in a nutshell, if um, if I'm if I'm attempting to to gain access to some kind of web resource, like a website, for instance, this would happen at the application layer, right? We talked about some of the protocols involved there: HTTP, FTP, SMB, all these different ones we talked about. These are for these are protocols that are uh, for accessing network resources. Okay, so that would function at the application layer. Uh, the presentation layer, uh, this is the one responsible for data formatting and translation. I think she's typing something right now in the chat. Okay. Um, so this is, the, this is the layer responsible for data formatting and translation. Another good way of thinking about this uh, is the layer responsible for encryption. Um, I, I like to do an analogy, uh, and, I, and I tend to draw this out. So I'm going to actually pull up... Um, 
Uh, can you see this on my screen, Joe? I see the uh, seven layers of structure. Okay, uh, let me see. Uh, hang on one second. Let me just share this real quick. Can you see this now, the paint window, MS Paint? Yeah. Okay, cool. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and expand this out. So if we're looking at this as a layered architecture, which is how I sort of want to look at it, can you still see it okay? Yeah. Okay. So um, uh, first of all, let's go ahead and start with the application layer. Okay, so the application layer. Uh, let's, let's take this to the form of analogy because I think analogy is a really powerful tool for understanding this. The application layer is sort of the, uh, the letter, if you want to think about it in the mail analogy, right? It's what you're putting into the letter. Um, so, and let's say this is a very long letter, but you want to send it in individual envelopes. Okay, so this is a, uh, a 25,000 page letter. Okay, and you're going you're to mail this across the United States in the, in the uh, United States Postal Service. So we've got our many, many page letter. Okay. Um, so now, unfortunately, we can't, we can't, uh, we're not going to be able to actually send 25,000 pages in a single envelope. So this is going to have to be broken up. Um, so uh, I'm going to go ahead and throw the presentation layer in here. The way to think about the presentation layer, um, let's say this is a secure letter, something that, something that we, we need it to be, we need it to be completely locked up. Make sure that nobody in between can access it. So we're going to actually stick this into a lockbox. Um, we can't send we can't send a lockbox. We can only send one lockbox at a time. Let's think about it like that, I guess. Um, so we're going to lock it up. Actually, uh, okay. And now we only want one recipient to get uh, into the lockbox. And so what would happen is that the session layer, we send over a key essentially. So we send the key, we, we, we call up our buddy, we say, or it's a combination. How about let's put it that way. We call up our buddy across the U.S. Say, we're sending you a lockbox uh, with a letter inside it. And uh, uh, it's got a combo, a combination lock on it. Here's the combination. So that would be the, so the, at the session layer, that's where authentication happens. So this is where your encryption happens at the, at the presentation layer. Right. Uh, let's go ahead and throw this in here. So, common form of encryption uh, is an encryption called SSL. It's a, an encryption protocol is called SSL, Secure Socket Layer. Okay, that would be your encryption at the presentation layer. Okay, so there. Um, now the session layer. Let's just. Uh, Say this is this is the combination. You call your buddy. All right. Or uh, or a combination. All right. Oops. So you're you're. Essentially, you and your you and your pal both have the combination beforehand, and that that encryption or that authentication happens at the session layer. Okay. Uh, next, we have the oh, chat. Hang on one second here. Nope. Not chat. Oops. Somebody's uh, feeding back. You might want to mute yourselves. 
I mute everybody. That was Marsha. Marsha, you fed back. I muted you. But uh, if you have a question, just just chime in and I'll uh, I'll unmute you. Okay. So that's the top three layers. Essentially, at this point, you have data that's ready to be sent. Um, I know my analogy is not perfect because you can't do this in the physical world, but the transport layer takes your lockbox. Um, let's say, ha have you ever seen the magic trick where, uh, where you, you slide the plates in and it cuts the person in half and now you have two halves of that same person, right? Yeah. You know what I'm talking about? You've seen that magic trick before? I've seen that one, yeah. Okay. That's the transport layer. <laughs> okay. The transport layer, you have a magic, let's say you have a magic knife that can cut the lockbox in half. The lockbox is still, you know, locked up and you can't, you can't uh, necessarily uh, reassemble it. Um, oh, you know what? Um, I, will, I will throw one more thing in here uh, at the presentation layer before I forget. Uh, the presentation layer also puts pages into order. Okay, so to read the letter, the pages have to be in a specific order right, in a specific format, if you want to think about it like that. So the presentation layer puts these pages into the correct order, okay? So also locks them up if it's encrypted, okay? So that's, that's a good way to think about it. All right. Um, so now the uh, transport layer in our analogy, uh, this is the layer that is responsible for uh, breaking it up into smaller bits that can fit into envelopes that can be sent. So we're, we're cutting, we're actually going to use the, the magic knife that cuts our lockbox. We're going to cut it uh, into as many pieces as you'd be able to slice it so that it's about uh, the size of an envelope that you can mail, right? Something you can stick into your mail. Because at this, at this point, it's too big, right? You've got a large a large lockbox that you're not going to be able to send across, uh, you know, in the mail in, a, in an envelope. You have to, you know, obviously send it in a larger format, and we can't do that. We can only send it in an envelope. So at this point, I know it's, I know it's kind of a silly analogy, but we take our magic knife, and cut the box. Lockbox, oops, B O C K S, into segments. All right, so there's our analogy so far. We've cut the box up into segments, okay, at the transport layer. Now, now you can you can slide that into envelopes, okay, um, and address the envelope, and that's going to happen at the network layer. Okay. So we're at the network layer. Okay, so I need to extend this down just a smidge here so that I have room for the last layer. Okay, so at the network layer, this is where we actually put our segments into envelopes and throw an address on there. This is the, this is the address of where there are letters actually going to across the country, right? Specifically to the, the person that it's going to. Oh, we lost Joe, it looks like. All right. So now, um, at the uh, final layer, um, before you're actually sending, this is going to be, uh, let's, let's pretend for a minute that you have um, a mailroom. You're sending from company to company, and your company is large enough to where it has its own mail sorting center. They've got their own mailroom. This is the data link layer 
Okay, this is the layer of communication that goes within your corporation, right? It's this, this, this is from person to person in your corporation or from me to the mailroom to go out of my network, out of my corporation. So this is where you put it into, uh, in a lot of mailrooms they have these, um, they have these tubes, they have tube systems where you stick the, you stick your envelope into a tube and you stick it in. Uh, you might have used these at like the bank. A lot of mail rooms use these. So it's like the tube, you stick it in the tube and it gets it just to the mail room. The mail room's gonna then uh, sort the mail for your company, but it can also, it can also send and receive mail from inside, uh, from outside of your company. Okay, so the data link layer is a lot like a mail room. Okay, if we're taking this analogy to its extreme. Okay, so this is our mail room. And when we, when we address it, we're addressing it at this point just to the mail room. We're saying this is going to, or, or to, to the outside, to, you know, maybe, you would, maybe it would be addressed uh, to, your, to, to someone outside of your network. So, right, so if it's, uh, if, we're, if we're thinking about it in the, in the, the, the router or switch context, your mailroom is like a switch, right? It's forwarding based on who, who it's destined to within your network, but it can't forward based on anything other than that. So when you address it, you're addressing it, in this case, to the gateway. You're addressing it outside. You're saying, this, this is going to go to the mailroom, but the mailroom needs to send it out of the network. So it's going to be addressed to the gateway in this case, or to uh, your post office. So let me put another thing here. Um, at the network layer. If you want to think about this, routers are post offices. Okay? Because there's going to be several post offices along the way, and they're looking at the, the addressing on the envelope. Okay? Your mailroom, corporate mailroom, I'll put it that. is a switch or a bridge or whatever, okay? And they have uh, essentially uh, uh, an out that they're gonna send it through, okay? So that is uh, our data link layer. We're, oops. We're sending it to the mailroom. The mailroom is gonna forward it to a post office, right? That post office for your area is going to be your area router, okay? Um, when I can hear hear you. My uh, computer just stalled. I'm having uh, camera trouble here. Okay, no worries. That's I'm fine. Up. <laughs> That's fine. As long as you can hear and see, you should be just fine. Yep. Okay. All right. Um, so this is where we've gotten so far. We're uh, we've called the data link layer sort of like a mail room if you're in a corporate environment. So you send it through to your mail room in one of those uh, one of those mailing tubes. So, all right. Is this analogy confusing anybody? I mean, uh, Jessica, how do you feel about this analogy so far? Is it uh, making it harder to understand this or easier? No, it's making it easier. I, I think I understand a little bit better, actually. Good, good, awesome. What about you, Joe? How do you feel? Yeah, I mean, it makes sense. A little part I missed there, but uh, I, I, I get it. Okay, and Marsha, you understanding this? I don't know if she can hear super well, so we're going to just uh, say she's got it. Okay. Yeah, I've got it. Oh, you do? Good. Yeah. All right. Hey, Marsha. <laughs> All right. Sorry, I didn't know if you could hear or not. Okay. All right. So uh, next we have the final layer. This is the physical layer. Um, a good way to think about this is, okay, so uh, I'm going to say the encapsulation at this layer is the, the uh, um, uh, how do how do we how do we put this? Um, I don't know what the tube things are called that you actually sh you actually put into the chutes, but those uh, those are those are our encapsulation at this layer. That's your frame, right? It's the little thing you put the envelope in, right? It's going to get de-encapsulated when it gets to the mailroom or you know or to the post office if you want to think about it like that, right? So uh, the analogy is not perfect, <laughs> but but this thing is going to get taken out of this frame and then they're going to read the envelope to really know how to forward it once it gets to that route, right? Does that make sense? Think yeah. about it, think about it like the, 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 the makes sense. that tube that you put it in, the little, the little, um, I don't even know what to call it, but we'll just call it the, uh, the tube thing. 
<laughs> there we go. All right. And so at the physical layer. Vacuum tube. Vacuum tube. Sure. Yeah. No, <laughs> that, that vacuum tube actually is a, is a thing. Uh, vacuum tubes are in CRT monitors. I don't want to draw any, any confusion, but the tube thing, hopefully everybody watches this and they don't just look at this, uh, or hopefully they listen, they don't just look at the, uh, the paint, the MS paint. All right. Okay, so the physical layer. Okay, physical layer. This is the actual tubes, right? There's no addressing at this point. You're just sticking it into the tube and sending it on its way at the first leg of communication. Okay. Okay, does that make this uh, pretty understandable for everybody when I break it down like that into an analogy? I know the analogy is not perfect. If you really get super uh, thoughtful with it, uh, it's not a great analogy, but of course you can't make a perfect analogy ever. Um, so now let's, now let's bring this into the frame of reference of, of actual computer networking here. And we'll just sort of think about it in that way at the application layer here, oops, the application layer here, um, we're, we're dealing with, hang on one second. This right here, this is where, uh, our actual data comes in, right? So this is, what, this is what we're trying to get from point A to point B, if you want to think about it like that. We're not really trying to, everything beyond this is, is just to get it there, you know, whether it's about getting it there in order or secure or whatever, that's, it's just about getting it there. The presentation layer, if you want to think about it like this, it's about once it's, once it's uh, sent, it needs, to, it needs to recompile the information that's being sent on the screen in a, in a format that's, that's something that you can look at, right? That's the presentation layer in a nutshell. It's putting the pages of the letter in the, in the analogy, it's putting those pages into order. If you wanna think about it like a web page, you're sending a web page or, or, or receiving a web page. The presentation layer is what's making sure that that web page comes, uh, in, in some cases securely, not always, but if it's, if it's coming securely uh, or, or uh, Make sure that that, that that information comes in in a way that's, that's something that makes sense uh, to post onto a web browser, right? So if I go to, if I go to Yavapai College, right, there's a bunch of images coming in. There's a bunch of text coming in. There's a bunch of information coming in. The presentation layer is what takes all that information and makes it into something that you can look at on your web browser. It's something that you can view and actually, and actually is comprehensible, right? It's not just getting a bunch of images and you have to then uh, sort through them and make sense of it all. Okay. You can see presentation layers break down or the presentation layer breakdown sometimes. Uh, I don't know if you guys have ever done this, but you go to a website and it looks kind of funky. Like things aren't formatted just right. It, things are all jumbled around. That's a breakdown at the presentation layer. Okay. That's something that happened with the presentation layer of communication. Okay. So this is, this is, uh, making it legible, making it understandable. I'm not going to even write that out, but presentation layer makes things understandable. Okay. Um, at the session layer, session layer is responsible for establishing the initial establishment of that communication, right? Establishing the communication at the first step, right? Um, it's also responsible for authentication, logging in, logging out. Um, that happens at the session layer. You guys have maybe seen the uh, the notice um, in a in a browser, like if you're on your web web uh, uh, your your banking website, um, and you sign in, and after so much time, it, it gives you an error that says um, session timeout. Uh, oh, I have to upgrade to Pro to go longer than ten more minutes. Okay, well I guess I'm gonna have to upgrade to Pro before long. Okay, so. Um, we've got 10 minutes left. I'll give you the word of the day right now. The word of the day is application layer. It's two words, application layer. Okay. So you'll punch that in into the fill the blank. Okay, so just in case I get disconnected. The session layer, uh, this is responsible for logging in, logging out. If you use any kind of authentication to get onto the website, there's a timeout at the session layer. If, you, you, if there's an inactivity um, on a page for so long, eventually the connection is going to be cut off. 
that point. Uh, transport layer is what breaks everything down into something that's small enough to send on a network. And then once it gets on the receiving end, putting it all back together and handing it up to further up layers, okay? The application presentation and session layers. Okay, um, the network layer, of course, responsible for uh, assigning IP addresses and routing data from point A to point B across networks, inter-networking, okay? So across multiple networks, okay? Getting data in the form of a packet between networks, okay? Um, at the data link layer, uh, the data link layer is, of course, inter network addressing. If you want to think about it like that, inter, I'm sorry, uh, inner network addressing. I apologize, inner network addressing. So within a network, it's what's responsible for getting the frame from point A to point B within a LAN or within a WAN or within, within a network uh, extent, the extent of a broadcast domain, in other words, right? Um, or the extent of a subnet, if you want to think about it in those terms. Uh, however you want to think about it, whatever makes it easiest for you to wrap your head around that, it's, it's addressing for getting it from point A to point B within a network, okay? All right, and of course the network layer is also responsible for that as well. You, you need both, but the data link layer is for getting, is only goes from uh, within a network. It only gets to the extent of a router, okay? and then it gets de-encapsulated at that point, and only the packet makes it to the final destination if you're going between networks. Um, and the physical layer, of course, this is the layer that, uh, at which everything is plugged in and connected. It's really all it comes down to, okay? So are there any questions? We have about seven minutes left before this thing kicks us off. Um, we could do sims real quick, but... Uh, are there any questions? Uh, nope. Okay, then uh, we're going to call it a day there. I guess uh, I didn't realize Zoom required me to pay for it to keep the meeting going on yeah. beyond 30 minutes, but uh, I guess lesson learned, and uh, we'll, uh, probably, I'll probably have to buy it uh, at some point here. Or maybe I can get Yahoo by College to pay for me for an account, <laughs> something like that. Okay, so no questions, then... Uh, um, everybody has a pretty good understanding of this. I know that most everybody that signed on today uh, does have a good understanding of this. I think a lot of the people that aren't here, no, maybe not a lot, I'm not gonna dog on everybody, but maybe the people that aren't here uh, will need to watch this video uh, to really wrap their heads around this. I think it's a pretty easy concept to understand. You just need to remember the breakdown, right? And what happens at each step of the process. Yeah. Right. Post to make the complex simple. That's the whole point of it. Okay. Okay, so no questions. Uh, then I guess we'll call it a day. You got your word of the day. Um, did anybody not catch that? No, I got it. Uh, oh, just a question too. Uh, is there um, there'll be a chapter seven quiz on Tuesday? There will be a chapter seven quiz on Tuesday. We are not doing uh, review questions for chapter seven, however. Okay. Okay, and then I mentioned the, um, as far as the chapter six information about IP addressing, uh, the only thing that is required of you guys is the IP addressing quiz. Okay, um, if there's any questions about IP addressing, now would be probably a good time to ask, or Tuesday if you want. Um, normally I make everybody in, in my 115 class do a very large packet, um, but because of, the, because of the nature of this class, because it's been condensed, so much into about four hours a week and with this four and a half hours I guess um, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna insist on everybody doing that packet I just want you guys uh, to be to be practicing your subnetting um, and uh, in class on Tuesday we'll probably do a subnetting question or two and uh, we'll go from there okay so uh, if there's no questions then We'll go ahead and sign off, and I'll see you guys on Tuesday. Oh, I'm sorry. One other thing that oh, uh, uh, sorry that subnetting uh, thing you wanted to do uh, that yes. that was the one that was due uh, at any time while we were at any time. You'll have until the end of the end of the class. Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. Yep. Perfect. And so basically, uh, you can start it and then and then not submit. Um, I think I've enabled it so that you don't have that I don't have to go in and re-enable it. 
you only, you only get one attempt, but you can take as long as you want on that attempt, meaning you can do an open book, you can study, you can ask me questions, you can say, hey, I got stuck on this one question, is there any way you could help me out with it? And I'd be happy to do that. So uh, you have the full time, it's open book, it's open resource, you can do it on your own uh, time whenever you want. Awesome, thanks. Is it, is it just a bunch of subnetting um questions on yes that's it's 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 literally literally all of these questions are pulled from the website subnettingquestions.com so they're phrased in the same way that subnettingquestions.com questions would be phrased um some oh, of them okay. are fill in the blank some of them are multiple choice uh or multiple answer um but that's that's pretty much it yeah okay okay i really have only about three minutes left before it kicks us off so uh are there any other questions? Marsha, do you have any questions, comments? No? All right. Thanks for coming in, guys. Thanks for uh, making it out. Um, what do you think about the format real quick before I, before I, before I go? I just, what do you think about this? As a Mr. Cutter, mine, yeah. when I called and I hit the mute button, it disconnected me. It disconnected you? Yeah, so I have uh, stuff going on in the background. I can't put it on mute because it'll disconnect me. I can I can mute you from here, uh, so I just muted you right then. But uh, of course, either way, um, if if there's background noise or anything like that, I'll mute you so that we don't we don't uh, end up hearing all the background noise. So if it if it gets bad, don't worry about muting yourself. I'll take care of it. Um, okay. I, I can do this by phone, but it keeps shutting my computer down, and I don't know why. So m maybe it's too much for my five-year-old laptop <laughs> yeah joe joe got kicked off as well at one point so i don't know what's going on with that well if you guys want to bring in your laptops i'd be happy to look at them for you okay i'll bring it in tuesday i think i know what's wrong with mine i, I use a thing to uh keep it running faster and i let let my subscription expire but it works just fine when i got that sucker active gotcha okay well right on um i guess uh are there any more questions? We have like a minute left. I'm watching the countdown slowly tick away. Any questions? Nope. Nope. All right, guys. Thanks for coming. Uh, you've got your word of the day, and uh, I will. I'll see you guys on Tuesday. Yeah. See you. Adios.